Pokemon, but I hate myself. In this challenge that no one asked for, after every battle, I stuff a Pokemon in a box. The catch? I can only get one of each species. So I can get a Weedle and a Kakuna, but evolving Kakuna means not catching another. So lean back and watch. As I stumble through this self-inflicted, meaningless, more difficult than it had any right to be challenge. We start our adventure with the blue squirrel turtle known as Squirtle. Major props to you if you can figure out the naming convention that I used during this playthrough. I don't count the rival battle as the one where I have to lose Pokemon or no challenge would ever be possible. I catch a Pidgey and a Rattata on Route 1 because of course. I decided to go ahead and pick up a Spear and Mankey on Route 22 just so we have a bunch of Pokemon ready to go. Route 2 doesn't offer us anything that the Viridian Forest wouldn't so we head straight in. We catch a Caterpie, a Weedle, and a Kakuna and we don't catch a Metapod for some reason and that's gonna come back to bite us. The first mandatory trainer that we have to fight against, aside from our rival, is this bug catcher. So we're gonna go ahead and fight him, and then because of that, we have to get rid of a Pokemon. And the first Pokemon that we get rid of is Caterpie. We replace it with Weedle, then move on to our next mandatory trainer, which is Brock. Upon beating him, we're gonna go ahead and give up Weedle, put in Kakuna, and then go back to Viridian Forest to catch a Pikachu, but once again, forget about Metapod. There are three mandatory encounters on Route 3, and so I burned through quite a few Pokemon here, but thankfully, I'm able to replenish them in the very next section of grass that we get to. I pick up the Nidoran couple and a Jigglypuff, and I'm certainly not above trading hard-earned cash for a Pokemon, so I'm gonna have to go and pick up that Magikarp from the Shady Guy in the Pokemon Center as well. Mount Moon brings us a plethora of new Pokemon, Paris, Geodude, Zubat, and Clefairy. It does, however, come with the unfortunate price of two mandatory trainers in which we will lose two Pokemon over. Because I'm so close to the exit and I can get to the next Pokemon Center without skipping any trainers, I just go ahead and go to Cerulean City. Our War Turtle evolves and we catch an Ekin in Route 4, just in time for us to not really be able to beat our rival the first couple times that we try. But with enough can-do attitude and flinches, we can win. Now you might be wondering why I'm not training my other Pokemon. It's because I'm gonna trade them out so fast that I, I really only see the value in training one or two Pokemon at a time in order for me to be able to complete this challenge in any type of reasonable time frame. But power through we do, and we make it to probably the hardest section of this game, which is the Nugget Bridge and Route 25, where there's really more trainers than I remember. The Nugget Bridge takes out all of my reserves, and I'm down to just four Pokemon before I can replenish on Route 24 with an Oddish and an Abra. And the thing that ruined run after run was this guy right here. No, not the hiker. Youngster Dan, the guy that spins around but not always in the direction you think he's going, to. I swear I didn't run past him sometimes and he would still catch me, so every time I battle someone, I have to re-go back through the area, and that became exceedingly frustrating with youngster frickin' Dan. But it's okay, I made it through with a couple Pokemon to spare. I'm gonna go face Misty with a Pikachu and a Wartortle. Misty is annoying to be sure. I feel like with an electric Pokemon, I should just be able to waltz in, but she puts up a challenge anyway. But that's not nearly as annoying as what happens next, which is this Rocket Grunt. I didn't do my research enough, and I didn't have enough Pokemon to make it through, and I forgot he was mandatory. What are you? An idiot sandwich. An idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. And then when I redid my calcs, I realized that I forgot to get a Metapod. So I restart the game using Bulbasaur so that I can use cheap Leech Seed tactics and critical hits. And trust me, critical hits are going to be huge in this game. I get a Metapod in Viridian Forest and then I'm able to make it through this grunt. But the difficult road ahead is just starting. In the next route, I can only catch a Meowth. So I catch it and then I have to immediately give it up because of the mandatory trainer here. But in Diglett Cave and Route 11, I'm allowed to beef up my team a little bit with a Diglett, a Doug Trio, and a Drowsy. I'm finally able to go face my rival on the SSN without feeling like I'm gonna lose more Pokemon than I need to. With the new additions to the team, the rival battle is not that hard. Sure, he takes out a couple of the Pokemon, but I give harder than I take. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Don't misquote that, please. Doug Trio makes light work of the rest of his team, and then I go fight this old man who's my next mandatory battle. I face him down no problems, and then I fight Surge with relatively few issues because I have a Doug Trio and an Ivysaur who's resistant to electric attacks. But here's the problem. I'm down to one Pokemon, and 
the next area is blocked by a mandatory trainer. I thought about giving up here, but then you'd only have a four minute video and I need AdSense, so. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, Pokemon Johto, we're gonna go there. We're gonna pick up a Cyndaquil as our starter. We beat our rival to a pulp, then begin our monster catching journey anew, and boy do we catch a lot of them. It's worth mentioning in Johto that I'm gonna play with a couple new rules to make it just a little bit more hard. The first thing is, I can't use the Hoenn sound. That means I can't just get some more random Pokemon per route. The second is I can't adjust system time to bug the day and night system, so it's gonna be real time every time. And lastly, I cannot go to the Safari Zone. There's just too many Pokemon. It would honestly be too easy if I had the ability to go there. And we start off just catching everything. I get a Pidgey, a Sentret, a Rattata, a Caterpie, a Metapod, a Geodude, and a Spearow, all before the first mandatory trainer. I banish my Caterpie to the Shadow Realm, and then I proceed to Route 30 where I catch a Bellsprout, and then Dark Cave where I catch Zubat and Dunsparce. The next obstacle comes with Sprout Tower where I have to basically face five new trainers without getting access to any more Pokemon. After those five trainers, I have to then go to the gym, again, without any new Pokemon. Silver shows up at some point, but honestly, he didn't want any of this smoke. Faulkner goes down without any issues because I have the secret sauce of overleveling. It's not a Nuzlocke, don't at me. I catch an unknown in the ruins of Alf, and then a Mareep and a Hopip on Route 32. The challenge with this game is not necessarily the catching the Pokemon, it's going to be dodging all the stupid trainers. It's a skill that I'm just terrible at, and if I lose too many Pokemon in this run, I'm just not going to start over. Not because I hate Pokemon, but because I hate boxing Pokemon. It's like that feeling I used to get when I wouldn't feed my Neopets. I catch a Sancho in Union Cave, who is my favorite Pokemon, and then proceed to hatch a Pokemon that I completely had forgotten about until that point. It normally hatches way later, but I had to do a bunch of walking in this playthrough. I head back to Union Cave to catch an Onix, and then to the Slowpoke Well to catch a Slowpoke. There's four mandatory trainers in Slowpoke Well, so we do lose a few Mons there. And unfortunately, there's no new encounters before the gym, so I'm just gonna have to rough it with the ones that I have. If I had prepared even a little bit better, then I wouldn't have gotten into the situation that I get into, which is that I had to fight the twins. If I had gone down to just one Pokemon, then I could have made it out without having to fight them, but I kept it. And my rule with double battles is that if I fight two people, I have to get rid of two Pokemon. By the time I get done with my rival fight, I only have two Pokemon left. But, um, you know, that's okay because we're about to enter the Ilex Forest where I get a bunch of new encounters, and I do mean a bunch of new encounters. The reason for this is the little move known as Headbutt. Once I teach this to my Kulava, I have access to a bunch of encounters not only in the Ilex Forest, but across the region that I will go back and catch. Please enjoy the montage of me traveling across the land, searching far and wide. Each Pokemon to- okay, you get it. You get the picture. Now, you might think that using Headbutt is too easy and that I should have restricted myself even further by not being able to use it, but to that I say, no. Look, I'm bad at this game. I need all the help I can get. But if you think I should do this game without using Headbutt, if the video gets 10,000 likes, I'll do it, and I'll do it live so you can all see the pain of me not being able to dodge the stupid trainers that look over for no reason. As is tradition, I lose to Whitney on my first attempt and my first several attempts, but Enough attempts and I do manage to fight my way through the power of love and get my third badge. There's one mandatory trainer before I could get to the next area where I could catch Pokemon, but I'm not going to catch any there. I'm talking about the National Forest. Unless I happen to waltz in there on a day where the bug catching contest is already going on, then I'm not going to enter it because like I said before, I'm not going to change my system time for any portion of this game. Routes 35 and 36 come with a pair of Nidoran, a Yanma, a Sudobudo, a Stantler, and a Growlithe. I get into another double battle here and then head into Ecker City. I fight Silver again and he doesn't stand a chancy. I'm sorry. The Ecratique gym comes with a few different weird things. First is that weird glitch that you're seeing. It's not a hack, it's just a glitch that sort of happened when I changed some settings on my DS. It makes the overall picture look better, but apparently it messes with the darkness. If this were like a can I stay on the ledges of the Ecratique gym without falling into the deep dark abyss challenge, then yeah, I guess I would have gone back and changed it. It's a far more pointless challenge than that. And you get to be here for it cheering me on, doing the thing that no one asked me to do. My box does kind of get low after that gym battle, so I'm gonna go have to refill it. On Route 38, I catch a Magnemite, a Radicate, a Tauros, a Miltank, and a Snibble. I forgot that I had to go get Sir from Ecratique City, so I go back up the route and accidentally run into another guy. I have to go stop Team Rocket from being too handsy. On Route 40 and 41, I pick up a Tentacool, a Tentacruel, and a Mantine. And actually, if I'm careful on these routes, this, these are one of the few routes that you can bypass without fighting any new trainers. 
In Chuck's gym, there's only one mandatory trainer besides the gym leader himself, which is good because I don't think I can afford to lose any more Pokemon. This is the first part in the game where I actually have to train a little bit and I have to do some team reorganization. I do have to resort to some underhanded tactics here, namely Toxic Spikes, Rap, and Supersonic to get the victory here. Tubby T, our dear Spiro, evolves into a Fearow just in time for this strange woman that we've never met to give us the HM for fly. And then it's on to the lighthouse where I start making way, way too many mistakes. It's just, I'll see someone and then they'll be looking away and they lull me into this false sense of security so I think I can walk past them, but I can't. And for some reason in this playthrough, it seems to be the bird keepers that keep doing it. But I finally make my way to Jasmine and her disease-ridden Ampharos. And since I have to go pick up medicine anyway, I might as well go ahead and get this turtle bug Pokemon. Jasmine has always been a difficult opponent for me in these games. And this playthrough is no exception. I reset probably 20 or 30 times just for this match to get the burn on Steelix, but I didn't have to. If I had just leveled up to 35 here, then Quilava learns Lava Plume. I could have been a smart trainer. I really could have. Instead, I go to Route 42, miss out on a Raikou, and catch a Goldeen and a Sea King. Then I go to Mount Mortar and catch a Machop and a Meryl. On the other side of Route 42, I catch a Mankey and a Flaffy. You can't even tell me that's the wrong pronunciation. It's right. And then I catch a Girafferig on Route 43. Then I get sniped by the fisherman with the best eyesight in the world. To make up for it, I catch a Venonat, a Magikarp, and a shiny Gyarados. And then we get to one of the first real gauntlets of this game, which is the Team Rocket hideout. The reason this place is awful is because it's filled with these statues. They're not technically double battles, but I can't escape before the second battle begins, so I do have to lose two Pokemon every time I encounter one of these weird statues. I do replenish a smidge, though, by catching a Coughing and a Voltorb while I'm inside. I didn't talk to anybody that I didn't need to inside of the Rocket hideout, so no unnecessary battles, and I did this without a guide, by the way. Oh yeah. Remember that time that Lance just wants me to commit genocide on a bunch of electrodes? Well, I, I catch one of them. Normally I catch all three, but my box is pretty crowded at this point. I think I fought one more person than necessary in the Mahogany Town gym, but it was way more worth it than trying to go around him every single time. Price isn't that bad, I actually beat him on my first try because for some reason he doesn't like using water moves, and also I'm faster than his pilot swine. But really, the hero of the day is that electrode that I saved from the clutches of Lance's tyranny. My cool lava evolves into a cool fire bear, and I'm pretty much out of spare Pokemon. This lack of Pokemon led me to believe that I probably needed to use Headbutt to get through the game. In Route 47, there are a bunch of new encounters in that cave. We get Golbat, Kingler, Steelix, Krabby, Mischievous, Machoke, and then down in the water, we get Seal and Staryu. And then unfortunately, we do run into that hiker because I had to go get Pokeballs and I couldn't time it right again. I then make my way to the second gauntlet of the game, the Radio Tower, and I wouldn't have had to fight anybody except for Silver's a jerk. Thankfully, a good number of the rocket grunts inside the radio tower are skippable if you're careful enough, but Silver wants to start a fight again. Silver is kind of annoying, but post for alligator, like once I can get past that, he does have a glaring weakness to the enormous fire type on my team. I whittle his for alligator down with the other Pokemon on my team, take one water gun, and then just kind of blast through the rest of his team. No issues with a lava plume. I've now filled up two complete boxes of Pokemon that I can no longer use. The rest of the Rocket Hideout doesn't pose too much of a challenge except for this guy right here, which I almost got caught by because I couldn't figure out the controls, but ultimately I make it out of the basement without losing more Pokemon than I need to. I quickly realize that I won't have enough Pokemon to finish out the tower, so I go back and surf in some old areas and pick up a good rock. During my travels, I pick up a Poliwag, a Poliwhirl, a Quagsire, a Quillfish, a Psyduck, a Golduck, a Chincho, and a Sheldon. I also accidentally run into a swimmer, so one of the encounters kinda didn't matter. But after my adventures at sea, I go back to the radio tower so that I can power through the rest of Team Rocket. During which my Magnemite evolves into three, ma I mean Magneton. I catch the current leader of Team Rocket just staring at a steel beam. Pretending like I didn't just save the region, I go to Route 44 where I run into an unfortunate trainer, catch a Remoraid, a Tangela, a Weepin' Belt, and a Lickitung. Luckily for us, there's not any mandatory trainers inside the ice path, just that weird kimono girl that wants a push. So I catch a Swinub and a Jinx. Then I go to fight Claire, who honestly took me more tries than I would have liked because of her stupid, stupid Kingdra. Mostly the stupid Kingdra. She's got other tough Pokemon, but it was mostly the, the stupid, stupid Kingdra. However, because Pokemon is a game of skill, I just had to wait for long enough for me to get a freeze on her Kingdra. Once that happened, all it took was me surviving on one with Jinx and then getting a critical headbutt. That's it. That's all the luck that we needed. We make our way down into the Dragon's Den. I don't know if I could have skipped him. I honestly didn't try, but we do catch a Jatina 
teeny to make up for it. And then on Route 45 and Dark Cave, we catch a Graveler, a Glygar, a Fanpy, and a Wobbuffet. Then I hop hip, skip loon, and jump off over to Union Cave, where I fight a Fire Breather for the chance to get Natu and Smeargle. I was prepared to lose my team at the Elite Four, but I really did not even think about the Kimono Girls challenge here. It's a necessary part of the story that I can't skip, and I need strong Pokemon to be able to complete it in the first place. But they're all subsequent battles that I can't return to a Pokemon Center after. Which means that I have to completely restructure my team. The team that I had planned to take to the lead four. Not only that, but there's not a lot more encounters that I can get before I even go to the lead four in the first place. And even if I can throw a team together, it's probably not going to be that well balanced by the time I get to the lead four. But I'll have my revenge. If those stupid kimono girls made me go fight the bird, then I'm going to catch it and use it to beat people. Once inside Kanto, I catch myself a Sand Slash and a Ponyta. Now this route technically only has three mandatory battles, but I suck so I ran into an extra fisherman. My Fampy evolves into Donphan, the king of rolling out, and you'll see why in a little bit. My Dratini also evolves into Dragonair, another important asset to the team. Victory Road only has one mandatory trainer, and it's Silver, and he still has that glaring weakness to fire that we talked about earlier. Even on almost no HP, my Typhlosion just kind of steamrolls, no pun intended, the rest of his team with Flamethrower. I catch a Rhyhorn, then start structuring my team for the Elite Four. Well, this is it, but they're not gonna stay like this, because remember that we're still in the challenge, so after every Elite Four fight, I'm still gonna have to get rid of a Pokemon. The Elite Four is not that difficult, especially on the first time through. Since I had to start fresh anyway, some of my Pokemon are Eevee trained as well. The Eevees on my Typhlosion are pretty messed up, and the ones on my Dragonair are not quite perfect. But overall, it's a pretty good team. Will was one of the most challenging trainers when I first came to this Elite Four years and years and years ago. Unfortunately, he also has a weakness to fire, which most living things do. After Will, we part ways with our Gligar. Koga's up next, but I've got a legendary Firebird, so his bug and poison type Pokemon really don't pose too much of a challenge for me. Especially since, once again, I'm just gonna come in with my Typhlosion and burn everything to a crisp, including the Luke Destroyer Venomoth. We part ways with Ho-Oh as I'm out of Sacred Fire and I didn't bring any PP restoring items. Bruno's up next and I make pretty quick work of the first portion of his team with Donphan's Earthquake. Once he took down my Donphan, my Typhlosion, and my Dragonair, I actually thought that we were going to lose this match, but as it turns out, Shelter really came in clutch and with a couple of surfs, we wind our way to victory but it took too much of a toll on him, so we're gonna have to let him rest. Karen's usually annoying, but she's even more annoying when I only have three Pokemon to work with. But my bases are covered with these three. They power through in ways that only luck and determination and resetting a couple times could solve. After this battle came my hardest decision though. I had to let Typhlosion go because the only two Pokemon that I could see myself winning with here are Dragonair and Donphan. And even with the two that I picked, it took me so many resets to get this right. I, there are so many things I have to get just right for this battle in order for me to win. Part of the problem is that I'm an idiot and brought a dragon to a dragon fight. But when I say that Donphan is the king of rolling out, what I mean is that I power through so many of his Pokemon with just the move rollout. And even then, it comes down to the wire because... Lance throws in his Aerodactyl, which isn't too much of an issue because I have Thunder Fang. Except for, it is an issue because of two things. One, he lands a crit first move. Second is, Lance is a little jerk and wants to use full restores at every given opportunity. So we go back and forth and back and forth for a while. Thunder Fang, full restore. Thunder Fang, full restore. And then, I get, I think, pretty unlucky. I know that I got the whole rollout thing, but he gets another crit! If I had missed that last Thunder Fang, I would have rage quit. You, this would have been the end of the video. You would not have seen more than this, I promise you. Except I do hit it, and we win with just two Pokemon. And just like Ash Ketchum, I throw all reason out the window and start my journey afresh with my last two Pokemon. There comes a time in every man's life when he must play Voltorb Flip, and I hate that game so much. Hello. Bye. I mean... Oh. It's like Minesweeper meets Sudoku if both of those games sucked and you could never win. But I powered through for you, dear viewer, so if you could just send me $500 to $1,000 or hit the subscribe button, whichever's easiest. I completely forget that you can catch a Magmar in the Burnt Tower, so I go back and catch one. And then I added a duo to our team and a male combi. 
Unlike the Generation 3 counterparts, this time when I go through Kano, I barely have to fight anybody before I get to the gym leader in most gyms. And I'm going to show most of these battles pretty quickly as well, because there's only so many times I can explain that all I did for the entire match was Dragon Dance and then Waterfall. I did end up losing one extra Pokemon in Sabrina's gym because, you know, they're psychic, so they knew when I was going to cross their paths. On the new and improved Route 7, I catch a Murkrow and a Houndour. Then, in Celadon City, I'm able to catch a Grimer and a Muck by surfing. And then I have to do it again. I have to play Voltorb Flip. And it just, it kills me. I, I hate... I hate this game. I catch one of the strongest Pokemon of all time and then go to face Erica. and yep, I use Dragon Dance here, and then Dragon Rush instead of Waterfall. I finally get a Dragonite, and though you didn't ask, I have always wanted to pet his belly. I catch a Sunkern and then proceed to Route 25, where I lose more Pokemon than honestly I probably should have before trying to catch some more. I get Cerberus in bird form, and I did accidentally go into a double battle, so I lose more Pokemon than I wish I would have there, but then I headbutt and get a slack off. I pick up a Primeape, and then I go back to the place where we lost our first round, and we continue on because we have more Pokemon now. I catch an Electabuzz near the power plant and then face the long lost remnants of a forgotten organization. I pick up a Haunter and a Kadabra, and then I get through one of the hardest challenges of the game, which is the Cerulean Gym. No, not, not because Misty is tough or anything like that. No, it's because those sailors kept on twisting and turning and I really couldn't tell which way they wanted to look. In Rock Tunnel, I get a Cubone, its mother, and a Kangaskhan. And then I go to a tree and headbutt it for a Wurmple on Route 12. I'm gonna be super honest with you guys, I had no idea this many Hoenn Pokemon were available in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I wake up a Grumpy Gust, then throw him inside of a Pokeball. I catch a Diglett again, a Dugtrio again, and then pick up an Ariados right outside of the Pewter City Gym. In Brock's Gym, I did actually have to take it a couple times. It turns out Rock is super effective against Flying, and Dragonite's part Flying now, and that was annoying, but I got a Freeze Off on his Omastar, and then surfed the rest of the way. In the Viridian Forest, I pick up a Seedot, a Pikachu, and a Shroomus, and then just south of Pallet Town, I go fishing for a Lantern. And it's a good thing that I picked up so many Pokemon along the way, because in order to get to Blaine, I have to fight quite a few mandatory trainers. Blaine isn't too challenging, because once again, I have a Dragonite who knows Surf. I go down to the new Seafoam Islands, and it's pretty much a net neutral, because I battle one too many trainers, and I can only pick up a Dugong and a Horsey that I haven't caught before. Now, technically, there is another Pokemon that I could have caught, but apparently my Dragonite hates giant icebergs, and I didn't save, so onward we trek. Nidorina and Nidorino and Chansey are all available on Route 15, so I go ahead and pick them up before I go and face Janine. This is definitely one of those fights that was Dragon Dance into Dragon Rush, and we pretty much sealed the victory from there. Also, I'm pretty overleveled for this, but I'm not overleveled for the Elite Four. Look, I, I don't know what happened, but it seems that Blue never got the memo from the other gym leaders saying, hey, actually, we only use one type around here. And as a gym leader, it would actually be awesome if you only used one type too. He just completely disregarded that or didn't get the memo or whatever. The problem with Blue is that my Dragonite can't set up here. A lot of things that he uses just kill my Dragonite outright or doesn't let it set up. And so it was kind of a frustrating battle to get through altogether. Luckily, everything else whittled his team down to where I could come in with Dragonite and my Dragonite's faster and it seems as though his Arcanine doesn't have extreme speed yet. I make sure to catch a Rapidash and a Larvitar before I head into the Elite Four. And because there's no weird Kimono Girls quest, then that means that I'm in a much better spot than I was last time, even though the teams are technically harder to beat. But you see, this time I changed my strategy completely. Not only did I EV train a good portion of my team, I was also able to give them movesets that would make anybody online just kind of rage quit by how cheesy they are. Will wasn't too difficult, but at the end of the day we had to say goodbye to Rapidash. Toga isn't too terribly difficult, we do go shot for shot for a while, but in the end I'm able to take him out because I've got stronger and better Pokemon. That's, that's usually how these things work. It was actually a really hard decision figuring out who to let go after this fight. And unfortunately, even though she had put so much work in for us and carried us through most of the game at this point, Dragonite had to go. But we trudge onwards, never forgetting the legacy she left behind, but also I, I just can't go up against Lance with another dragon. I, I can't do it. The battle against Bruno is a war of attrition. I just need to get some of his Pokemon down enough that I can come in with Dodrio and absolutely sweep. With Lucario, I let Lucario get a couple of hits off on my Pokemon so that his defense is low enough so that my Dodrio can come in and, again, make a clean sweep. And I've always heard it's best to leave on a high note. And that's why Dodrio, after we fight Bruno, is off the team. The battle with Karen took a lot out of me. 
because I had to do a lot of mental gymnastics and I had to switch out my Pokemon often because she kept cursing them and things like that. A lot of things had to go exactly right in order for me to be able to win this battle. And it was still hard fought. It doesn't help that like all of her Pokemon can just crit on a whim. Snorlax ended up being my last Pokemon in this battle and he almost didn't win because Payback just does so much damage. No, that's a lot of damage. But he wakes up and body slams just in time for me to retire from the team. It's like they want to fight for their last hurrah, I promise. I had decided which ones I was going to get rid of before the battle starts. The fight against Lance, just like the fight against Karen, took a lot of mental energy. See, I have some things going for me in that I top my Lancer in stockpile, not because it can ever spit up, but because it raises my special defense. And my regular defense, if I'm not mistaken. That, in addition to leftovers and aqua ring, make me a veritable tank. But of course, Lance isn't without his strategies. He roars to get me out, and then he also uses this dumb thing called Parish Song with his Altaria to get me out of the match. Lance knocks out my Rhyperior with his Dragonite, and then I Ice Beam his Dragonite in the face. Lance doesn't want to lose so bad that he uses Parish Song on his last Pokemon, but I discharge, fighting through the paralysis to win the victory. But there's still one challenge left. I assemble the rest of my Pokemon. There's no other Pokemon that I can catch that's not true. I could have gone back to play Voltorb Flip, but I'm not doing it. I refuse. And also the Pokemon that I have in my box are probably pretty good to deal with red. Because there are no other mandatory trainers, I didn't have to worry about anything else. I can focus on just EV training my guys. So they ended up with near perfect EVs. I think I messed up on a couple. But my fight with red is pretty okay. It's a pretty okay fight. And I did actually beat him on the first attempt, so what you're witnessing is the first attempt of me going through. It just goes to show what you can do with a little determination, a can-do attitude, EV training, the right move sets, held items that are pretty much perfect for the scenario, and cheap tactics like Toxic Spikes and Soft Boiled on my Chansey. But you know, I think I forgive myself with the amount of full restores that Red decides to use in this battle. If I didn't have Soft Boiled, I kind of, I probably would have lost. Red has a lot of threats on his team, but Venusaur is probably the deadliest to my team composition because I've got Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and Tyranitar. Now I know that Nidoking and Nidoqueen are both poison, so grass isn't, but it definitely didn't help. In a true twist of fate, my Kingdra gets frozen and taken out just like I did to Claire's Kingdra. And then begins the long and arduous journey of my Blissey versus Red Snorlax. It's truly infuriating how many full restores this man has, and he just uses them with no qualms. But my cheap strategy of having an EV trained HP Blissey with Toxic and Protect pays off. And in the end, it's not my calculations that win me the badge. No, it's his Charizard using Flare Blitz as his last Pokemon when I still have one Pokemon left, so he actually just kills himself. If you liked this pointless challenge, you are gonna love this pointless challenge. Have a great day.